Hey McFly subscribers! So, I'm really excited. Today's gonna be another unboxing. Yeah. I don't know if you remember, but a few trips ago I caught a really big trout. Um, and it did not fit in my net. I mean, literally, I, I tail was sticking out and I dropped them. And uh, this was my old net. Okay, and you know, it's, it's 15 inches from here to here and 25 total. Um, and I was contacted after that. I was in the, I was looking uh, for a new net at that point. Um, after that happened, I was like, man, I need to get a bigger net. And I was contacted by a custom net maker who, who wanted to send me one and wanted me to try it out. So here it is. It just came in the mail and I'm really excited about it. Now I'm not going to show you this side because it looks like it has his, uh, address on there. But this is how it comes. Um, he actually makes a few products, and I think he said he was going to send something else as well. Some kind of uh, rod holder kind of thing. So Let's go ahead and open this up. I'm really excited. So there's going to be more to this video than just this unboxing. But I just got it in the mail today, and I could not wait to unbox it. I want to take a look. I'm really excited about it. He does really nice work. I've taken a look at some of his other, you know, samples. He sent me some pictures, but I have not gotten to open it. I want to open it on camera for you guys. So. Oh, and by the way, this is a, uh, a Benchmade Osborne 940. I've had this for about five, six years, and I love it. And the thing just... I use it almost daily. I'm opening boxes or whatever it may be, and I rarely have to sharpen it. It is awesome. It's a little pricey. Um, got it a long time ago, I think as a gift, and I mean, it, it's easy to open. And this is not auto. It's just, um, you know, it's really well balanced. It's a great knife. I'm sure you, you've seen reviews on them if you're into knives. Um, you know, I'll put a link down at the bottom if you guys want to check out this uh, this knife. Ooh. Ooh, this looks really nice. All right. Well, first I can tell it is a little larger. Oh man. Boy, that's beautiful. And he did send the rod keeper. So we'll take a look at that in a minute. That's not the main thing I'm interested in. Although it seemed like a pretty neat idea. He was telling me a little about it. Of course, I'm taking super good care of the net, yet... I'm gonna probably end up <laughs> beating it up because I'm gonna use it. However, oh, this is nice. All right. So a little background of the guy. He, uh, I believe, used to be a furniture maker. Um, he used to make furniture, and he uh, loves fishing. And he would make his own nets. And people said, "Hey, you gotta, you gotta make me some of those." And so started making some, and and uh, ended up. Uh, Starting his own business making nets. But boy, that's nice. So it's got the rubber uh, netting, which is really nice. Um, it'll help keep, first off, it'll keep the, um, rather than my old net, it's got cloth. So the hooks get stuck in it. It's hard to get out. It should, you know, it's just annoying. So this is rubber, um, which also I hear not only helps keep the, the, the hooks from getting stuck in it. Um, it does another thing. It, 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 it supposedly is better for the fish, at least from what I hear. Um, it's, it's just, you know, 
it doesn't wipe off the slime like the like that does um, like the cloth does so but boy that's nice and take a look at this craftsmanship it is beautiful absolutely beautiful Wow well, good job man that is a nice net now it is a little bigger obviously so we've got another probably about four inches so I think he said this is 17 to maybe 18 inch from there to there um, it's also a little wider as you can see and much deeper look at that much deeper which is a lot better um, so I would have had no trouble uh, landing that other um, fish plus take a look at that it's a much longer handle so I'll have a little better reach much better reach about double almost so there we go I really like this thank you so much for sending it I'm sure you'll probably see the video but man that is nice so this is going to be my new net guys this is totally going to be my new net I think I'm going to use this from now on now oh yeah that's in there solid so I was wondering about you know it is going to be a little longer it's going to hang down quite a bit more so but I think with weighting it shouldn't be an issue I'm going to use it still with weighting and uh You know, it's got this, a lanyard rather than, so it'll actually hang out like that, rather than a screw part. So, here, maybe that was out of the thing. It's got a lanyard rather than the screw in, but, boy, that is really nice. All hand done. This is all hand done wood. He used uh, maple. I think all this is maple, and then the darker wood here. Uh, the maple including this inlay and the darker wood is walnut so he he was saying that these retail for about 150 um, that's what he's selling for 150 dollars um, they take them like eight plus hours to make each he has multiple sizes the prices change depending on the size I don't know what the other prices are what the other sizes are in price wise um, but boy it is really really pretty so, I mean, really, for $150, I think it's a pretty good deal, uh, especially for a custom-made. Now, he, he does also custom-made uh, uh, nets as well, um, and he can kind of tailor them to what you want. Um, so, you know, basically, you just kind of, you can go on the website there and place an order and then uh, talk with him and kind of tell him what you want. Um, he also has these generic ones. Um, this is one of the generic ones. I didn't ask for anything different. I just said, send me something uh, nice, you know, and this is what he said, and it's very nice. So he also has a YouTube channel. So I'll put a link down in the description to his YouTube channel if you want to check it out. He's a guide. Um, he, I believe, in New York area, and he, um, he guides. But he also does this on the side. He used to be a furniture maker, so um, it's pretty cool. And you can check out his uh, YouTube channel. He does. Uh, he's kind of just starting the channel. Um, you know, just talk about uh, fishing and and you know stuff like that. So uh, kind of the same thing I'm doing here. So check that out. I'll put the link at the, the end of the video. All right. Well, let's take a look at the other thing that he has. So he was saying it's something called a rod keeper. He said this is kind of a prototype. He does have a patent on it. What it is, is to keep your rod um, together, still strung up, so you don't have to take the fly off, you don't have to, you know, um, if you do a lot of fishing, if you're fishing every day, sometimes it's a pain, it takes like five, 10 minutes to string up your, your rod. A lot of times, I have a car that is a wagon that allows me to stick my rod right through, um, but not everyone does. A lot of times you're sticking in the back of your trunk or whatnot. Um, or it won't fit in your garage or your house and you got to break it down but this allows you to break it down 
um, and keep the the line on it so you're not having to you know add the tippet add you know um, add your fly every time you go you just basically just stick it together and go so it's got two holes this is kind of a foam thing here it's got two holes that the rod sticks into and then this um, so you've got then your bow of the um, of the fly line um, there and this just kind of wraps around to keep the fly line from from moving and then it stays together and then you can put in your your car and it won't roll around um, or anything in your car um, pretty neat idea you know so let's test that out so let's say you've got I've only got the two pieces you would have your other or if you have a two-piece rod but four-piece rod would work so you would have your other one stuck in but I've only got the two so what you do is from what I'm gathering is you uh, it would actually be this side so when you you pull off you know you still got the line with it and then you just kind of turn your rod like that you stick one end of the rod in like that and the other end like that and then you would have your line kind of bowed right there and you know you would kind of just basically go like that and then your rods together. Look at that. Pretty neat. It actually holds it pretty good. Look at that. That's not. Hey, not bad. That's pretty cool. So there you go. There's the rod holder, a rod keeper. Sorry. He is selling this specific one, um, but he's constantly working on trying to improve it. So um, yeah. So that's pretty cool. Uh, he he's just designs new stuff um, trying to do that so you know gotta tip my hat to someone that is uh, inventious it's not a word <laughs> but invents stuff that's that's pretty cool I've never seen something like that so neat idea that's really cool all right so if you want to check out um, his products uh, the net and the rod keeper uh, go to www.modernflyfisherman no it's on here www.modernflyfisher.com uh, that's pretty cool so go there if you want to check it out I'll put a link also down in the descrip description section alright guys so I just got my sage method back if you remember uh, in one of my other videos I broke it uh, you know, it came back a lot sooner than I thought. So when I actually broke the rod, um, it was about two, maybe two and a half weeks ago, and um, it took about a, two weeks before that video came up live. And uh, I just got this back, and in about a week and a half to two weeks, roughly, um, that's how long this took to get back. So um, actually, today's Tuesday, so. This video will be the following video um, next Monday. Really excited to finally get my my favorite uh, streamer rod back. Really like six weights for streamers, especially uh, streamers for trout. That's how I like fishing bass too. But here we go. So they really took care of it. They got these nice, uh, heavy cardboard tubes plus the box. And they wrap it in the paper. Yeah, finally it's back. So it looks like they cleaned it up, at least from what I'm seeing. It doesn't look like a new one. It's the same one. I've still got a little bit of dirtiness on the handle and whatnot, but they did do a good job cleaning it. So it seems like when you send it in, I mean, yeah, guys, it was seventy dollars, but it—that's it, how much it costs to ship. You know, they're using FedEx. They've got it warranted. So if FedEx loses it, um, you know, you get a brand new rod. Um, so uh, you know, I mean, it might take a little longer, but you do. So you know, it does cost money, but you got to pay to get it shipped. You know. 
yeah, there's still little scuff marks on some of the other, but this is brand new. The tip, the part that I broke, is completely brand new. So, there we go. That's that's what it is. So what they do is they they will uh, just replace the tip part and they make sure that it fits to your rod. There we go. So that that's perfect. It fits perfectly. So there's my rod. It's all back, guys. I am really happy. And I'm even more happy because uh, Unfortunately, I missed uh, fishing that those bass uh, my last trip. Uh, that would have been really nice. But I'm going fishing tomorrow for some carp. And this is perfect. That five weight was not enough. But the six weight should be good. I mean, this is really, it's a stiffer rod. Um, I should be, I mean, I've caught large fish with it before. Um, so, caught some uh, good size uh, bass with it. I've caught good size, I caught a striper with it once that was really good size. Um, I think he was almost 30 inches. So it should be able to handle a 30 inch carp um, just fine. That five weight was definitely underweighted for me, underpowered um, for, <laughs> for a carp. It was kind of stupid. But these are stiff enough. There's I can put enough uh, leverage on them to be able to bring them in. So um, there we go. Finally, it's back. So now you guys will... Uh, be able to see me catch a few more fish hopefully. I'm really excited about it. Really excited. Alright, so there's another thing I want to talk to you guys about. Since we're kind of on the subject of uh, nets and keeping the fish uh, healthy and clean and whatnot, I kind of want to talk to you guys about something I would say a little controversial. Um, you know, everyone has these ideas that, you know, um, everyone's different. You know, there's some people that have commented on my videos on some of the larger fish that I've caught and why didn't you eat them? Why didn't you bring them home and eat them? You know, um, especially that small little lake that I caught uh, that large trout in. You know, my answer was, you know, I mean, that's a small, small lake. Um, there can't, you know, they're small. There's, I mean, there's a string of seven of them, but they're small, they're not large. So there can't be more than 10 um, of those uh, large sized trout in there in all of the lakes combined, uh, probably less, probably five. So. I don't want to take a trout out of a fishery like that. Um, I'm not against people eating fish. That's not that's not what I'm I, what I'm saying. And I think that's okay. There's a time and place for keeping fish, and that's that's okay to keep them. In fact, I do sometimes. Um, you know, but I I make sure I stay responsible with it. The problem is, um, you know, a lot of people will go home. Uh, you know, will go to the the river or the lake and bring home 20 fish. Their family isn't going to be able to eat it that day, so then they'll freeze it, sometimes forget about it in the fridge, and then therefore they've wasted a resource. They, it's a, it, I, I think of fishing as a resource. I think of the, the things that we use as resources, right? And you don't want to waste it. Um, that's the thing is that, you know, a lot of people talk about, you know, um, preservation. Well, I mean, there's a difference between conservation and preservation. I'm all for conservation. I think conserving your resources, conserving things, is good. Preserving, though, is a different idea. Um, generally, when people think preserving versus conserving, um, they kind of think of no humans allowed. So, you know, um, wildlife preserves generally don't let humans in. You can't fish, you can't hunt, you can't do anything. Um, wildlife conserve, so conservation, allow you to do it, but they but they make sure you do it in a responsible manner. Don't keep too many fish. Don't keep too, you know, too, don't, don't take down, you know, 20 uh, deer, you know. I mean, you don't want to do that. You want to, you want to conserve. You want to make sure in your responsibility, um, you want, you want to hold a big responsibility for, for nature. And I'm all for that. I'm, you know, I'm not a tree hugger. I'm definitely not one of those. Um, but I'm not for cutting down full forests either, you know? So there's, I think there's a balance. I mean, a lot of people, you know, I, I, like I had said, some people were like, why didn't you bring that fish home and eaten it? I would have eaten it, you know? You must be one of those crazy liberal, uh, you know, um, tree-hugging hippies, you know? And I, that's just not me. I'm not that. Um, definitely not that. But I didn't want to keep it because there is a responsibility that I held to that fishery, to that lake. Um, if I wanted to bring fish home that day, if I was going to eat fish home, I would have brought one home, but probably, uh, definitely not one of those large 
fish. Um, that's just not something I would bring home because there's not many of those. They stock that lake with uh, rainbow trout. Okay, so I'll bring home one or two rainbow if I wanted to eat it. Um, but I wasn't in the mood for fish that day, and I was not going to eat it that day, so I decided I wasn't going to bring fish home. And generally, I'm not ready to eat fish when I go out fishing. Um, sometimes I am, and I'll specifically target fish that I want to eat, um, but I'll make sure I do it in a responsible manner. Go to non-quality water sections at my river, um, where people, you're allowed to bait fish, you're allowed to catch fish, and I'll, I'll catch them on the fly, I'll bring them home, and I'll eat them, but... But that's rare. I mean, that's probably two or three times a year. Um, or I'll go to lakes that are, are stocked specifically for people to keep fish. Um, then I had some other people comment, you know, uh, how dare you? Why did you bring the fish up out of the water? Oh my gosh, that was terrible. You dropped the fish. Yeah, I made a mistake. I dropped it. And I felt really bad. In fact, it, it made me sad that I dropped the fish and it banged the rock. Um, but luckily it was, it was healthy, it, it swam away fine, and that fish lived to see another day. There's no way that fish died. I didn't hook them deep, but it happens. I mean, you know, that's the thing is you cannot save every single fish. Some people lose fish even when they're trying their very hardest. Even when all they do is they net it, look at the fish, pull out the hook, and let it go. Um, without taking it out of the water, the fish still die. Um, you might hook it too deep, hit a gill, whatever it may be. It's, it's possible. That's the thing with fishing is... It's never 100% guaranteed to save the fish, but, but you should do your best to try. Um, I'm really excited about having that net that is going to help keep the slime on the fish. Um, and one thing I do, every time I pick a fish up, I wet my hands. I make sure my hands are wet if I am going to pick it up, because if your hands are dry, you're wiping that slime right off of them, and that's not good. So you definitely want to try to do your best on everything to keep fish healthy. So wet your hands before you pick them up. Can't, you know, um, one rule I've heard is hold your breath. So you pick up the fish. If you can hold your breath that long, they're probably going to be okay. Now, they just pretty much ran a mile, you know, trying to fight you um, on the, the line. So if you start feeling a little winded after holding your breath, then you want to release it right away. I generally don't have a fish out for more than two or three seconds. I'll pick it up really quick, take a picture. Um, if I have to prepare my camera, I'll keep the fish in the water with my net and press the button for the camera um, before I pick it up. I'm not picking it up, messing with the camera, doing anything. I try my very best. Now, granted, I'm not perfect. I am human, and so are you. And it's okay if you mess up once or twice. It happens. Um, we're not perfect. And so this is this video is not. I mean, this is not made. I'm not saying this in order to come down on anyone on either side of the fence. I'm totally fine with people going out and catching fish and eating them. That's fine. Um, in fact, I encourage that. I think that's a good thing. I think we should use our resources. You know where that fish is coming from versus going to the supermarket and buying it. You have no clue. In fact, they probably lived a worse life than that fish you just caught. At least that fish lived a positive, a good life. Um, so we're promoting um, nature by going out and fishing and hunting and, and keeping it, and I'm okay with that. Um, in fact, I hunt, you know, I keep fish sometimes. Um, I'm okay with that. I'm an outdoorsman. That's what I do. And that's, you know, what a lot of fishermen do. But it is, it is a responsibility that we hold. We hold a responsibility to conserve. I wouldn't necessarily say preserve. Um, in a way, yes. Um, we should have areas that are kept from people ruining it. But there should still be a sense of conservation, um, where we can use the resources, but everyone should learn how to use it responsibly. And that's really all it's about. It's okay to cut down a tree here and there. It's okay to build a house out of wood. It's not okay to completely demolish an entire forest. That's not okay. Um, so, you know, that that's the difference. Um, don't bring home a hundred trout and stick them in your freezer. Don't do it. Um, maybe salmon snagging kind of idea might be different because those fish are going to die anyway. I get that. I get that. Um, and that's why they allow that. Usually they allow 25, um, at least in my local lake, they allow 25 of them because they want you to take care of them. They want you to take them out because what they're going to do is they're going to come spawn and then they die. And when they die, they make, they pollute the water. 
And so they want people to go and take them out and eat them. So that's, um, you know, there's situations where you can bring a lot of fish home that might be morally okay. It's okay to do. Um, it's done in a responsible manner. But going to a river and just bringing home 20 trout, 30 trout, 100 trout, whatever, freezing them up, putting them in your freezer is probably not a good idea. Um, if everyone did that, there would be no more trout. So, um, you know, that's, that's, the, that's kind of the moral of the, the story today. Um, again, not coming down on anyone on either side of the fence of this issue. I generally am more in the middle. I'm okay with, with hunting and fishing, but I'm not okay with people wasting. Okay, so, so there's, there's where I come from. And do what you can. I mean, not everyone has a lot of money to go buy a, a really high-end, expensive um, net that is going to be really quality on keeping the fish, um, you know, healthy. But if you have the money, I mean, if you're, if you're buying expensive sage rods, spend the extra money to keep your, the fish healthy if you're going to release them. Um, be responsible, you know. Crimp your barbs if you're not going to keep the fish. Why are you fishing with a barb if you're not going to keep it? Why? Um, if you lose one or two here and there, then that's what brings you back again the next time to want to fish, you know. So, you know, try to keep the fish healthy. Try to um, keep nature good. Don't litter when you're out on the river. Don't, you know, th those things. Those, those are the responsibilities that, of that we, we're, I feel that we should be held to as, as outdoorsmen. Make a good example. Um, yeah. So, anyway. Sorry for the serious uh, talk there, but it's uh, <laughs> something that I felt had to be said. You know, I get a, a lot of extremes on either side commenting on my videos, and I also get a lot of very level-headed people coming on my, commenting on my videos as well. Um, but, you know, there is... There is some sorts of sort of responsibility I feel I hold to be able to tell you guys about these things. Be responsible. Hey, I just want to say thank you everyone for watching. Uh, thank you so much for uh, being a part of my channel and and um, and for those of uh, you I know that you're out there. I know many of you do this already. I thank you so much for sharing my videos on your Facebook, on your Twitter, um, on forums and whatnot. I appreciate it very much. Um, it means a lot to me when people like what I make and want to share it with other people. It means a lot. And, um, and plus, you know, the more, more views I get, um, the, the more resources I will have to be able to make more quality videos, get better cameras, get, you know, better equipment, um, you know, um, buy more gear for reviews and whatnot. So, um, again, I appreciate everything, guys. Um, Thanks again for continued support, and thanks for everyone that's still praying for my dog. I, I, I do appreciate that. Um, she seems to be doing okay, so that's good. Well, if you uh, like this sort of thing, guys, uh, please hit that subscribe button right down below. And uh, now it's time for you guys to go catch some fish. I'll see you on the next video.